Warm welcome to an yet another discussion on gate electronics and communication question papers. Today we are checking gate 2015 set 1 and we are primarily focused on network theory related problems in this tutorial. There are six questions from the topic network theory during that examination. There is only a very rare chance to repeat the question. But there is a strong chance to repeat the concept behind the question that's why we are dealing more with this type of previous question papers right so moving to the first question in the circuit shown at resonance the amplitude of the sinusoidal voltage across the capacitors so this circuit is a basically series rlc circuit and it is under resonance right so at under resonance capacitor voltage is q times applied voltage but q the quality factor for a series rlc circuit is given by 1 by r root of l by c substituting rlcs 1 by 4 r equal to 4 ohm root of l by c l equal to 0.1 milli henry so 0.1 into 10 raise to minus 3 divided by capacitor is 10 raise to minus 6 so that turns out to be 1 by 4 into root 100 right equal to root 100 is 10 10 by 4 is 2.5 so the quality factor is 2.5 now the capacitor voltage is 10 into 2.5 that is 25 volt so 25 volt is the answer a similar sort of question for parallel rlc circuit was asked during previous gate paper moving to another one mark question In the network shown in the figure all resistors are identical with R equal to 300 ohm the resistance R AB right R AB of the network is right R is given as 300 ohm and we have to calculate the resistance between the terminals A and B so this question can mislead so this question can mislead us to do in delta to star conversion right but actually this type of questions can be redrawn and the answer can be obtained much easier way so don't try to do it in delta to star conversion way so i am redrawing the circuit there is first a resistance r right again another r here now another r here again i am redrawing the this resistance r as this one similarly another r and at this point this point is here i am extending it drawing another r r r right so this resistance is this one now this resistance is this r another r and uh, again another r right here also there is an r here also there is another r and finally r again another r and the completing the connection this is a and this is b now we can calculate the total resistance so this combination is the first portion similarly next part is this one and the third part is this one right look at this is basically a wheatstone bridge type connection that is the bridge is balanced to that is r by r equal to r by r left hand side upper resistance divided by lower resistance equal to right hand side upper resistance by lower resistance so there will not be any current flow through this resistance same is the case with this portion again same is the case with this portion also so again we can uh, redraw this circuit r right r and uh, one r another r right this portion is repeating two more times so 
the resistance of this portion is r plus r is 2r parallel 2r i said earlier it is repeating two more times so 2r parallel 2r again parallel with 2r parallel 2r but we know 2r parallel 2r is half of the resistance whenever identical resistances are connected in parallel the resistance is half so r parallel another r parallel another r now three resistances are three identical resistances are connected in parallel so the total resistance is r by 3 that is r equal to 300 ohm so r by 3 is 100 ohm 100 ohm is the answer right moving to the next question in the given circuit the values of v1 and v2 respectively are v1 is the voltage across this dependent source and v2 is the voltage across this current source so i am writing the node equation the node voltage is marked as v1 from the figure so v1 by 4 plus another v1 by 4 now 2i 2i current is leaving the circuit so plus 2i equal to 5 ampere current is entering to the node so it must be marked as negative sign or equal to 5 but i equal to i is the current flowing through this four ohm but i equal to v1 by 4 so i am substituting it v1 by 4 plus v1 by 4 plus v1 by 2 right because i equal to v1 by 4 so v1 by 2 equal to 5 v1 by 4 plus v1 by 4 is v1 by 2 v1 by 2 plus v1 by 2 is v1 so v1 equal to 5 right as v1 tends out to be 5 we can calculate what is v2 from the figure v2 is the voltage marked across this 5 ampere current source v2 minus v1 v1 is the voltage at this node so v2 minus v1 is marked as v2 minus v1 by 4 ohm is marked as yeah to 5 ampere right now v2 minus v1 equal to 20 or v2 equal to v1 plus 20 v1 is 5 so 5 plus 20 is 25 25 ampere is the v2 so answer is a 5 volt 25 volt now moving to the next one more question in the circuit shown the switch is thrown from position a to position b at time t equal to 0 the energy taken from the 3 volt source to charge the 0.1 microfarad capacitor from 0 to 3 volt is we know energy stored in a capacitor is given by energy stored in a capacitor is given by half of cv square right half of cv square that is 1 by 2 into c is 0.1 microfarad into v square v is 3 3 into 3 is 9 that is 9 by 2 is 4.5 but again a point 1 is there so 0.45 micro joules is the energy stored by the capacitor but checking the question in the question it is asked to calculate the energy taken from the three volt source to charge the capacitor right so the energy supplied by the source is to be evaluated energy supplied by the source is actually two times of the energy stored by the capacitor so energy supplied by the source is two times of energy stored by the capacitor right equal to 0.45 into 2 that is 0.9 micro joules so the answer is c so now you may think where is the balance 0.45 micro joule of energy right po- balance 0.45 micro joule of energy is dissipated across this 120 ohm resistance so you have to clearly remind that whenever a battery is connected across a capacitor only half of the energy is actually stored across the capacitor and balance energy is dissipated across the resistance or wire or internal resistance of the battery so moving to a two more question in the circuit shown switch is closed at t equal to zero assuming zero initial conditions the value of vct that is voltage across capacitor at t equal to 1 second is right so it's a very direct question 
ജസ്റ്റ് ചാർജിങ് ഡിസ്ചാർജിങ് എക്സ്പ്രഷൻ ഈസ് നീഡഡ് വി സി ഓഫ് ടി കപ്പാസിറ്റർ വോൾട്ടേജ് ഈക്വൽ ടു വി ഫൈനൽ മൈനസ് വി ഫൈനൽ മൈനസ് വി ഇനിഷ്യൽ ഇ റേസ് ടു മൈനസ് എ ടി ഹിയർ വി ഫൈനൽ ഈസ് സോ വി ക്യാൻ ഡ്രോ ദ ഫൈനൽ സ്റ്റഡി സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഫിഗർ ദർ ഇസ് എ ടെൻ വോൾട്ട് റൈറ്റ് സ്വിച്ച് ഈസ് ക്ലോസ് ദ ടി ഈക്വൽ ടു സീറോ നൗ എ ത്രീ ഓം റെസിസ്റ്റൻസ് നൗ അനദർ ടു ഓം റെസിസ്റ്റൻസ് capacitor is actually across this two ohm resistance so capacitor behaves as open circuit after attaining steady state so capacitor final voltage is 10 into 2 by total resistance 2 plus 3 is 5 so v final equal to 4 volt so substituting here 4 minus 4 minus initial voltage is zero as assuming zero initial conditions e raised to minus at now we have to evaluate what is a a is 1 by time constant but time constant being an rc circuit 1 by rc now we can calculate what is this r r is the resistance value after closing the switch so the resistance is 3 parallel to right we have to short circuit the voltage source for calculating the resistance so 3 parallel to so r equal to 3 into 2 by 3 plus 2 right so that is 6 by 5 right capacitor is 5 by 6 so rc a equal to 1 divided by 6 by 5 into 5 by 6 that is a equal to 1 so substituting here 4 minus 4 e raised to minus t equal to 4 into 1 minus e raised to minus t now substituting t equal to 1 second we can obtain the answer as 2.5284 2.5284 is the value of capacitor voltage at t equal to 1 seconds right moving to another two mark question in the given circuit the maximum power in watts that can be transferred to the load rl is right so we have to calculate what will be the maximum power transferred to the load again this question is a typical question to evaluate how well you studied the theory look at the load resistance it is a resistive load not a complex one so for a resistive load we have to calculate the maximum power in one way and for a complex load we have to calculate in another way so again i am repeating here it is given as a resistive load so anyway we have to first of all evaluate thevenin voltage and thevenin resistance so first of all we can evaluate thevenin voltage thevenin voltage is actually the open circuit to voltage faced across this terminals so voltage is 4 4 into this branch resistance j2 divided by total resistance total resistance is 2 plus j2 that is cancelling 1 to 4j by 1 plus j equal to 4 j is angle 90 degree divided by i am marking this a plus ib in the form of r angle theta so root of 1 square plus 1 square is root 2 angle tan inverse of imaginary by real imaginary part is j so tan inverse of 1 by 1 that is 45 degree equal to 4 is actually 2 into root 2 into root 2 angle 90 by root 2 angle 45 degree so this is 1 root 2 root 2 cancel so 2 root 2 angle 45 degree so we obtain thevenin voltage as 2 root 2 angle 45 degree right now we can evaluate thevenin resistance rth thevenin resistance is the resistance across this terminal when the voltage source is deactivated so to deactivate the voltage source we have to short circuit it so now the thevenin resistance is 2 parallel j2 2 parallel j2 is 2 into j2 divided by total resistance 2 plus 2j so 4j divided by 2 plus 2j 4j divided by 2 plus 2j right 4j by 2 plus 2j is 1 plus j so thevenin resistance is 1 plus j right So now we can plot the thevenin voltage source with series with the thevenin resistance in this circuit. So now the voltage source is this thing 2 root 
angle 45 degree in series with thevenin resistance actually thevenin's impedance that is 1 plus j and it is terminated by a load resistance that is marked in the figure rl and the value of rl must be root of 1 square that is a real part of this thevenin's impedance plus imaginary part of thevenin's impedance square right so root 2 now we have to calculate the maximum power transferred power equal to i square into load resistance right so first of all we have to calculate i i equal to v by z voltage thevenin voltage is given as 2 root 2 angle 45 here we have to take only the real part right r part or real part so 2 root 2 because at the load side it is terminated by a resistive load so v v is 2 root 2 divided by z z is the total impedance of this circuit that is 1 plus j plus root 2 that is root 2 plus 1 plus j right so the impedance is actually the root of real part square plus imaginary part square so root of 2 plus 1 the whole square plus imaginary part one square right that is total impedance now power equal to i square that is 2 root 2 the whole square divided by root of 2 plus 1 the whole square plus one square right we have taken square of this term that is 2 root 2 square divided by root of 2 plus 1 the whole square plus 1 square right so we have taken i square i square into load resistance load resistance value is given as root 2 now on the numerator side 2 root 2 into 2 root 2 into another root 2 divided by denominator side it is a plus b the whole square so a square plus b square plus 2ab so root 2 plus 1 right so it turns out to be 2 root 2 into 2 root 2 that is 4 into 2 8 8 root 2 divided by denominator side is 3 plus 1 4 plus root 2 so the answer is final answer is 1.656 now if the load side is terminated by a complex load the complex load impedance must be 1 minus j as it is real it turns out to be root 2 we have calculated for the real resistance if it is complex one it is 1 minus j the load impedance must be 1 minus j and the answer is maximum power transferred for a complex load is v square by 4 rth or 4 is it is v square is again same that is 2 root 2 2 root 2 square divided by 4 into thevenin resistance thevenin resistance is 1 that is 2 root 2 square by 4 equal to 1.96 so if the load is terminated by a complex impedance we obtain it as 1.96 and if it is terminated by a a uh, real impedance that is a purely resistive one we obtained it as 1.656 and uh, coming to the answer of this question it is as mentioned 1.656 watt so for more gate tutorials subscribe my channel now i am signing out till we meet again with an another gate tutorial thank you